Folks, let me tell you about a seller's whose plan horribly backfired. I'll get into that and then the latest home prices and insights for the Peel and Durham region for week ending September 4th, 2024. A, a friend of mine called me asking if I had any advice for his colleague. His colleague had kind of got into a situation that he needed my advice on. So my friend's telling me, now remember, I have no, I've got no interest in this transaction. I was not involved in any way. It's my friend telling me something his colleague at work is going through. Now his colleague had basically sold the family home. This is the home he grew up in. He had his own home. His parents, unfortunately, had passed away. And as part of the estate, it was the son who was selling the family home. And, and he sold it, but he had seller's remorse. He thought, I should have kept it. It's the home I grew up in. So he's thinking for sentimental reasons, he should have kept the home. And also the price he got for it, he's thinking, you know, if I would have just spent a few bucks renovating it, I could have got it a bit more when the market turns around sometime down the road. So either way, he wants out of the deal. He no longer wants to sell the home, but he does have an accepted agreement of purchase and sale in place. It is not closed yet. It's still a little bit a ways from closing, but the home is technically sold, just waiting for closing date. So as my friend's telling me this, and he's telling me he wants to get out of this agreement, he basically doesn't want to sell the home anymore, that he has already technically sold. In my head, I'm thinking, I wonder how he's gonna do that. Cause unless the buyer agrees and say, oh, okay, you want to change your mind, Mr. Seller? No problem. Give me my deposit back. We'll rip up the agreement. Unless the buyer does that, I don't see how the seller can back out of the deal. So my friend tells me that what his colleague did was he told the buyer, he sent a message to the buyer side, revealing several hidden defects in this property. That this happens every spring, this happens every winter, there's this issue, there's that issue with the home. And these were all hidden defects. I, I found out apparently there was a home inspection done. These defects were not uncovered, were not discovered. And, but the seller's attitude is, is he's going to tell the buyer, Hey, you just bought a lemon and hoping that the buyer says, Oh, I don't want the home anymore. But what actually happened literally within a day or two of informing the buyer, you bought a home with these deficiencies that were hidden that nobody knows about except the seller. He received a letter from the buyer's lawyer stating <laughs> these deficiencies. Sorry, I can't help to laugh at this. These deficiencies must be fixed before closing. So <laughs> he's trying to get the buyer to change his mind. And now the seller is basically on the hook for getting these repairs done. I asked my, my friend, I said, hey, are these deficiencies actually real or is he just trying to scare the buyer? He says, I don't know if they're real, but here's this problem now. Imagine these deficiencies are not even real, but now he's got to get these things repaired. Can you imagine a seller going, oh, I got to fix these. Sorry, I was only kidding. I didn't really mean it. I was pretending these deficiencies were there. I, I, I don't know how people get themselves into these situations. He's trying to scare the buyer. And now the whole situation has been reversed. The seller, not only does he got to sell a house, he changed his mind, didn't want to sell. He's actually got to repair it for the buyer because the seller's plan backfired. Like, does nobody talk to their lawyers these days to say, hey, Mr. And Mrs. Lawyer, here's what I'm planning to do. Do you think it's a good idea? Like, man. So 
you know, my advice to my friend to pass on to his colleague was, you really, really, if you didn't speak to a lawyer then, you most definitely need to be talking to your lawyer now. Anyways, I thought I would share that with you. I find it amusing. Maybe you do too. If you feel this video can help somebody you know, please pass it along. If you get value from what we're talking about, subscribe. If you want to speak with me about your real estate situation, selling, buying, it's really simple. There's a link up here. There's a link below this video in the description. There's a link to my calendar. Click on that, book a time that's convenient for you, and we'll talk about whatever's on your mind. Now, let's get into the numbers. Folks, we have an awesome townhouse for sale. It's, it's large, over 2,300 square feet, backs out onto a ravine. Check the video out at the end of this video. Here we go. Here's a quick summary. We're going to be focused on detached properties only for Mississauga, Brampton, and for Peel Region. For Peel Region, we're looking at Pickering, Ajax, and Whippy as, as the Peel sample. Uh, average sold price. They actually, if we look at the beginning of August, average sold prices kind of look like they're trending up in these areas. We're going to start off with Mississauga. Now keep in mind, for weekending September the 4th, it was the Labor Day long weekend. And in many pockets of the GTA, we do see a reduction in volume. Uh, uh, just The numbers are not typical of a normal transactional real estate week when it comes to a long weekend. Sometimes we don't notice any changes like from Mississauga, there's not really a big change, but other times we do see a big change in activity on a long weekend. So for weekending September the 4th in Mississauga for detached properties, 35 were sold. Four of those were at $2 million or more. Average sold price Climbing, it's been climbing for a few weeks now. It's now at 1,489,000. 1489 is 3% higher than where we were this time a year ago. The median price is 10% higher. Now, for a while, prices were trending down, but in the last four weeks or so, kind of looks like prices are starting to creep up again. 35 were sold, only 17% sold at list price or more. 83 were listed, which is up a little bit, up slightly from what we listed the previous week. But when we look at active listings, active listings means the, the detached properties actually available for sale at a specific given time, which is sub, the midnight September 4th. And during that week, 35 sold, we're basically saying in that week, September the 4th, 5.8% of all the available properties for sale sold. Now, 5.8% is a low number. It might seem low to you. It is a low percentage. But we got many parts of the GTA where it's 2.2% or 3% or 4%. City of Toronto was 4.7% that sold for week ending September 4th. So this is just for detached property. So Mississauga at 5.8 is outperforming the City of Toronto when it comes to percentage of, of sales. Months of inventory sitting at four months of inventory. Months of inventory was trending up. It's now looking like it may be coming down, and that helps to explain what's happening with prices. They were trending down, but now it looks like they're starting to creep up again. Here is Brampton. For week ending September the 4th, 31 detached properties were sold. One was at $2 million or more. Average sold price has been trending down, but the last few weeks, similar to Mississauga, prices are up. It's now at $1,219,000. 1219 is 7% higher than where we were this time a year ago. When we look at three months, this is the first week in three months where the average sold price was actually higher than where we were this time a year ago. 
The median price is 13% higher year over year. But remember, Labor Day long weekend, sometimes the numbers are a little bit, little bit off for the long weekend. 31 were sold, 16% sold at list price or more. Listings trending down. In most areas, we saw a spike in listings for week ending September 4th, a spike versus excuse me, a spike versus the previous week, not in Brampton. It's pretty much what we listed uh, uh, last week. But 31 were sold compared to how many are actually available for sale, which is 904. 3.4% of all available detached properties for sale actually sold, only 3.4%. And months of inventory climbed up to 6.7 months of inventory. Here's the, P, the, the, here, the, the Durham region, sorry. For Durham, I'm using Pickering, Ajax, and Whitby. I remind you of that. For weekending September the 4th, 35 detached properties were sold. No properties sold at $2 million or more. Sales have been trending down. Average sold price is $1,097,000. It's up from last week, but overall trending down. Compared to last year, a million and 97 is 5% higher year over year. The median price is 3% higher. Median price for Pickering, Ajax, and Whippy, it's a million and 60. 35 were sold, 31% sold at list price or more. 82 were listed, 441 are available for sale. That's how many detached properties are sitting between Pickering, Ajax, and Whitby sitting for sale. 7.9% of those sold. So Pickering, Ajax, and Whitby, higher percentage being sold. It seems it's a bit more active. Months of inventory, the lowest of the regions I'm talking about today sitting at 2.9 months of inventory. Below three months of inventory, we say is a seller's market, which is not something you're hearing often about, you know, seller's market. We're talking either balance market or buyer's market, but you're going to see pockets in Pickering, Ajax, and Whitby that are pretty competitive right now when it comes to prices. But we're at the top end of a seller's market, bottom end of a balance market. That's Pickering, Ajax, and Whitby. Here's a quick summary of months of inventory you're going to experience in most cases either a buyer's market or a balance market. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome day. You're about to see 29 Oleana Way in Brampton. This is a large four bedroom townhouse over 2,300 square feet and it still has room for a large office. It's a modern home and the lot, big lot, backs onto a forest. Have a look.